brain and how it works. Um, I think that started very early for me because I struggled with depression and anxiety as a child. I actually had panic attacks. So I started wondering, you know, what is it about my brain that makes me operate so differently? What I like to focus on really is what I believe is your most valuable resource. People are always talking about time management. And, and specifically, when people talk to me, they like to talk about time management because they'll ask me what I do, which happens a lot on planes or elevators, and say, well, I'm a nutritionist and performance coach, and basically just work with people on work-life balance type things. And I always hear the same response. Oh, I know I should be working on that. I know I should be eating better. I know I should be going to the gym. I know I should be taking better care of myself, but I just don't have enough time. And I was really fascinated to find out that the same things I was teaching corporate executives about how to manage their energy for mental performance were exactly the same things that they were educating people to do to prevent or prolong the development of Alzheimer's. In the last five years doing these presentations, what I've noticed is there's really these three key factors that I believe are getting in the way of people's performance. And in addition to just their performance, I also believe these are the same three problems we all struggle with when it comes to our health and our happiness. And so, when I look at what's going on in our society right now, the biggest issue that I see is this constant drain on our brain and our mental energy. We're really being pulled in a thousand different directions. So again, if you look at our energy system, you can have all of the physical energy that you need, you can have great energy quality, but what happens when you're getting pulled a million different directions and your focus is getting scattered? So I think the first real big issue is just the busyness that we're all facing. I think most people get frustrated because they can't do what they know they should do. So I've been working with corporate professionals for over 10 years and there's not a single person I've ever met who doesn't know that they should be eating lighter more often or moving more regularly or taking breaks. I mean, that's common sense, everyone knows that. The challenge is how do you actually do it? And what I've discovered in studying the brain is that the brain a lot of times uh, functions kind of independently of what we want. So you could think of it as your brain being like the CFO of an organization. Your brain's constantly assessing how much energy you have. So at the end of the day, for example, when you're feeling like you're burnt out, it's really hard to make good decisions. And studies have now actually shown that when you have to exert self-discipline or willpower, it requires glucose and oxygen, the same things that fuel decisions during the day or fuel us to get up and walk around. Energy ultimately comes from the same source. And so your brain is constantly monitoring, do we have enough energy for the demands that we have? Then at the same time you have the heart, or what I like to think of as the CEO of the operation, and your heart wants to change, your heart really wants to lose those five pounds, or your heart really wants to exercise so that you're healthier. Um, but your brain, when it's running on empty, doesn't feel like that's a good you know, use of your energy because eating less means you're getting less energy. Exercising means you're spending more energy. So just like the CFO of an organization would say to a CEO, great idea, we'll do it tomorrow when we actually have more in the tank. So that, you know, excuse that everyone knows, I'll start tomorrow, there's a brain basis to that thought because tomorrow we'll have energy. The problem is tomorrow comes, we don't manage our energy effectively, and we still feel like we're running on empty. Stress is the most toxic thing for your brain. In fact, stress hormones will literally kill a brain cell if you put it in direct contact. It's that toxic. So cortisol, which we're gonna be talking about, we actually have some control over whether or not our body produces cortisol. So I'm gonna to talk to you about that and how we can control that. So busyness is a problem, stress is a problem. The third one I've already mentioned, we're getting older, nothing we can do about that. But there are some things that we can do to make sure that not only are we going to age well, but that we're healthy, that we can be successful, that we can continue to do extraordinary things as we age. Scripting is another way of kind of coming up with something to focus on. And so scripting, I mean something like a focus phrase, something you tell yourself that helps you get into a mindset of being fully focused. 
So for me, I've been practicing this for a long time because just like everybody, I'm distracted and I'm thinking about different things. So I always really practice when I'm with somebody to be present. And that's all I tell myself, just be present. Just be here now. What's interesting about the brain is about 50% of the time it is thinking about the future because we're preparing for what's about to happen. 50% of the time we're thinking about what's coming next. 40% of the time we're thinking about what already happened. The mistakes we made, how do we fix those mistakes, which makes sense from a survival perspective. We wanna prepare for what's coming, we wanna learn from what's behind us, but that only leaves 10% of the time to be fully focused and fully present. I feel like it's my responsibility and health educators in general to give people the means to change, not just the information. Because the more information we throw at people, the more information overload our brains have and the less we're likely to do anything with it. So I think it's so important that the message is conveyed in a way that keeps people's brain in mind, how they're gonna perceive the information, but also sets them up for success. Not by just giving a prescription of a million different things that you could try and also not telling you what worked for me necessarily because it might not work for you but walking people through a change process that if you think about it this way and if you do it this way keeping your brain in mind you can actually change and become successful with your change